We will now have a message from Reverend Dr. Alan D. Jenkins, Jr. Praise God. Fear not. Amen. Praise the Lord. How are, you, how are everybody this morning on this beautiful Christmas day? We thank God that uh, we have another opportunity to just come out and share and give God the glory. We say Christmas Day is not often that we uh, find ourselves on the weekend like this and uh, just coming off of the uh, a hard-earned week, and here we can celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, Christmas Day, and this something we had contemplated, well, maybe we'll just not do it uh, uh, on this particular day. Uh, it is uh, Christmas. It falls on a Saturday, uh, the Sabbath, and, uh, you know, as we contemplated that, the Spirit of the Lord said, nah, just go ahead on. If somebody uh, is out there, uh, we're only talking about an hour. We can give God an hour on Christmas Day uh, between unwrapping our gifts and settling up with our family and uh, giving all of our warm welcomes and thank yous to folks who have come from near and far. Well, as we had heard the scriptures this morning, I thank uh, Sister Benjamina uh, for reading those scriptures. And uh, we are looking at Luke 1, 26 through 38. And in between those scriptures, the angel coming to Mary, there were three exact places uh, where God uh, told or the angels told individuals to fear not three um, examples, three illustrations, and we're going to touch base with uh, three of those illustrations uh, in connection with fear. The title of the message today is Yes or No. Yes or No. Faith, yes. Fear, no. And if you heard the scriptures read into your hearing, uh, the angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, Fear not. Fear not. So, This is the point of contact with uh, all of us this morning because tomorrow uh, will be the day after Christmas. And guess what? Uh, Some folks will have a tree you ever ride, especially in in the inner city in South Philadelphia. I can remember uh, folks buying trees, and I used to buy a tree and run down to what was called Point Breeze. Uh, It went from um, uh, just a a straight-up inner city thing, and now they got stores and stuff all sitting back up there. I remember the five and dime, five and dime on on Point Breeze where you can run down there and get you a tree, you can get you some snow boots. and uh, It was like uh, going shopping, going down to Point Breeze. Folks would buy Christmas trees down there, bring the Christmas trees home. Uh, Some folks set the tree up and by the end of the day on the 25th of December, you can find the trees back out on the sidewalk. Uh, does somebody know what I'm talking about? Some folks determined to keep the tree up at least until the day after New Year so that they can just look at the sparkle for a week. Uh, but I say that the sparkle that we have is eternal, eternal. Uh, so when we talk about the, the, the glory of God, the glory of the Lord, it's not uh, on a one-day thing in between uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And by the time the, the day is over, we throw the tree out. And uh, I remember folk picking up, and we as kids used to take all the trees and down there in the, ta- uh, the uh, uh, task of projects, uh, all the trees that were thrown away, we'd make a bonfire and put them out in one of the courts and the thing, all the trees would just, we just light up and just uh, laugh and have a good time out there. You say, where are you going with that? I'm saying that the angel of the Lord comes to us and tells us, fear not, fear not. Faith, yes, fear not. Not because we used to put those fires out there, we all be afraid. And if somebody come out, we'd run. Fear not in connection with Jesus Christ. Fear has been a part of the human existence since the fall of man, and we find that in Genesis three, uh, eight through ten. Fear not. Remember, remember this title. Everyone, regardless of how brave they seem, is afraid of something. Stay with me. Someone said that they were personally afraid of heights. 
uh, not so much afraid of being way up there because the view from up there is incredible. Uh, not afraid of the fall because uh, the free fall is exhilarating. It's an experience like none other. Uh, if I had to define fear, or at least my fear, it would have to say, uh, I would have to say that their fear of heights is really a fear of a sudden stop at the bottom of the fall. Amen. It's not so much about the heights, not so much about the free fall, but my goodness, uh, when you come to a, a, a dead stop, I think I'm afraid of that more than anything else. I say again, everyone is a little or a lot afraid of something, snakes, spiders, diseases, how about financial setbacks, how about old age, how about wrinkles in the face, how about gray hair, how about rejection, how about being disappointed, how about exposure to something that you don't want to be exposed to, how about being forgotten by someone, how about feeling left alone and lonely. There is an entire world industry put together out there uh, to play on the fears of others. You hear what I'm saying? Remember, the angel told Mary, fear not. And I'm saying to us this morning, going through this next year, this is a transition message uh, from the Christmas story over to the New Year's uh, story, because we have got to find ourselves in a place of comfortability after we celebrate New Year's, uh, which will be this time uh, next week. We'll watch the games on TV. We'll do everything that the flesh wants us to do. But I remember I said that the world exposes us. It's an industry of fear, an industry of fear. Look at the politics today. It's an industry of fear that keeps us bound. But what does the angel of the Lord say? Fear not. He's telling Mary, fear not. And I'm saying to you, by virtue of the spirit who is inclined to speak through me this morning, Fear not. Do not become overwhelmed with fear. Amen. It's an industry, my sisters and my brothers. This is not a by chance thing. It's an industry. Remember, Cain slew Abel. And what did Cain do? He goes out and builds a city. And what is that city based on? The fact that he murdered his own brother and spilled his brother's blood on the ground. And God came unto him and said, what have you done? Your brother's blood cries out to me. So what am I saying? Fear. He feared God. Cain feared God. So he was going to set up an establishment of his own. And anything based in negativity is going to have to stay in negativity unless Jesus Christ comes into that situation. Fear not, my brothers and my sisters. I was in the military, and you know, they coaxed us and told us that a little bit of fear can work to your advantage. You understand what I'm saying? Don't go in bold and big and feeling like everything is okay. No, there's a little bit of fear that is necessary that can work to your advantage. I'm not talking about overwhelming fear where your knees are knocking and you don't know up from down, in from out. I'm talking about a little apprehension. I'm talking about making right choices. I'm talking about saying the right things at the right time for the right reason. I'm saying that we have to calculate who we are and how God is going to use us. Even in the Bible, we can see that there were men and women who, who, who uh, were stalked by their fears. You say, what is that, uh, Dr. Jenkins? Well, Abraham lied about Sarah out of fear because he was about to lose his wife. He told uh, the people who were coming at him in Genesis 12, 11, and 13 that she wasn't his wife, told him that, he was, uh, that she was his sister because he feared. Amen? Jacob uh, displayed fear from his brother Esau in Genesis 32, 6 through 8. Moses feared Pharaoh in Exodus 2, uh, 14. He also feared rejection. Who shall I tell them sent me? Who shall I say? He 
feared uh, the rejection uh, that would come upon him from the children of Israel and the Egyptians. Rejection. We fear rejection. Now watch this. This is one of the greatest examples. The disciples feared the storm. When they were out on that sea, they feared. They feared. And what did Jesus say to them at one point? O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. He said, why did you fear? If you had stayed uh, in faith and not in fear, I would have kept you going. That's Matthew 8, 24 through 26. Nothing has changed. People are still caught in the grip of their fears. And this is even true during the Christmas season. Oh, yeah, this is still a Christmas message I'm saying here. Fear sometimes. A time that should be joyous, happy, totally Christ-centered, as we were having conversation this morning with uh, one of the brothers uh, out there. Benjamin and I was having just a little conversation. It's not our birthday. It's not mine, not yours, not somebody else's. The bags are ripped and open the paper. All that means nothing. We should be christ centered in our celebration of the coming of the Lord Jesus. God wouldn't allow it to have been in the, in the Bible itself if he did not want us to see and reverence and celebrate the fact that he came in human flesh in the guise of a man called Jesus. We fear not having stuff. We fear not having enough money, not meeting everybody else's expectations. We worry over things. Somebody is worried today. Somebody is worried right now whether the turkey uh, is is tender enough. Somebody is worrying over the sweet potatoes uh, that ain't sweet enough. Somebody is worried over the greens that ain't spicy enough. Somebody, uh uh-oh, you're making me hungry now. Look out, y'all. I might be heading to South Philly this afternoon. Fear comes over us, and we allow ourselves over who will be there and who will not be there. God knows who's going to be sitting up with their feet up under your table this afternoon. God knows. Trust me. God knows whether you or not. We just seem to fear just about every little thing in our lives. But the angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, wait a minute, Mary, fear not. In reading a book, a, a, a Scottish preacher named John uh, McNeil uh, told uh, during his childhood he had to walk a long distance home every evening, and his route led through a forest uh, with a large ravine, a river that ran through it. He had to cross over, and reports said that wild animals and gangs of robbers were often seen in that area. Great fear would seize his heart as he made his way past the spooky-looking trees. And he recalled one night, it was especially dark, but but he says he was aware of something or someone uh, that was moving slowly and quietly toward him. Uh, He says, I was sure it it was a a robber when a voice called out, It's, it's eerie tone struck his heart with fear, and he he thought, uh, I'm finished now. Uh, Then came a second call, and this time he could hear the voice saying, John, John, is that you? It was his father. Uh, He had known of my fear and had come out to meet me. Are you getting the gist of the story? Fear not. His father came out to meet him as he walked through those woods. It was a word from his father that brought peace to his heart. And peace as he walked through the night, as he was fearful. Fear not, my sisters and brothers. What we uh, uh, fearful humans need is a word from our father, a word from him who is able uh, to expel our fears and eliminate our worries. We have such a word before us this morning. 
fear not. This is going to get a little heavy, so please hang in there with me. Three times God sent angelic messengers to the earth with uh, messages connected to the birth of his son, the Lord Jesus. Stay with me. Each time they brought big news, news which troubled the hearts of those who heard these words. However, they also came with a message of peace. Three times the angels appeared. Three times they spoke the words, fear not, in connection with Jesus coming into the earth. Let's take some time this morning to examine uh, the messages of these angels and learn for ourselves what it means to fear not. Amen. Number one, in Luke 1, 26 through 38, Write it down. Do not fear God's providence. Amen? Do not fear God's providence. Uh, fear not of human impossibility. Don't fear what you think you can't do. Embrace what you know God can do. What does providence mean? Providence means the care, the guardianship and control exercised by a deity, God, divine direction, all right? God's divine direction. In other words, it is the overwhelming watch care and involvement of God in the lives of his people. That's what providence is. He's there, sisters and brothers. He's there. Providence, the care, guardianship, control, exercised by a deity, divine direction. He is there. He is overruling. He has watch care over us. Remember, point number one is providence. Do not fear God's providence. What's this? Number number A in 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 my in my. Uh, my, my outline here, the calmness in verses 26 through 27, the calmness of Mary's life. You hear me? This angel first spoke to Mary. When Gabriel appears to Mary, she is probably about 14 or 15 years old. Oh, yes, they got married very early because they had short lifespans. And stay with me. She had probably grown up dreaming the same romantic dreams that girls have dreamed since the dawning of time. Dreams of marriage, dreams of a home, dreams of a family. She is even engaged to a man named Joseph and about to be married. Come on, now watch this. Watch this. Watch where this goes. According to the text, she has maintained her sexual purity, she's a virgin, y'all, as well as her spiritual purity. She is been with God and being with God. God chose her because she has a sense of spiritual purity. I ain't saying she wasn't a sinner. I'm saying that she gave herself over to godliness. She is living close to the Lord and is living a good life, a life as good as she could before the Lord. Mary apparently has it all sewed up. You hear what I'm saying? A bright future is right there before her. She is having and had everything that she could look forward to. Well, I, I really like it when, uh, when my life and your life uh, goes just as planned. Wow. There are times when we sail the calm seas of life, but those days often are fleeting and few and far in between when compared to the days when trials stalk us uh, and come upon us to ravish us. You hear what I'm saying? I had a conversation this morning with one of my beloved brothers. And he said, wow, the way I was going ain't the way that God wanted it to go. So he was thanking God 
uh, by all means that he was pulled out of the muck and the mire and God snatched him by the nap of his neck and set him on high, put him in good standing in a right place. Yeah, I'm talking his testimony this morning. God blessed him and God is continuing to bless him. The way he was looking at it is not the way God was looking at it. The way Mary was looking at it is not the way God was looking at it. This young lady had everything set before her, and all of a sudden, she had a challenge in her life. When Gabriel makes his announcement to Mary, her life is immediately turned upside down. Mary is called upon uh, to bear, watch this now, watch this, watch this, to bear shame to bear reproach and humiliation for the glory of God. Oh, I can launch off onto that, but let me stay close to my notes here. uh, Hers is to be the greatest honor ever afforded to a woman, but at the same time, it carried with it a tremendous social stigma. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Sometimes giving it to God means you got to give it up in life. Giving it to God means somebody who knew you when you were sitting out there. When I was sitting out there, when my when my nose was full with stuff, when my mouth and my lungs was filled with stuff, and, and God knows, God knows, none of us are perfect. But when you get into a thing uh, where God becomes uh, extremely uh, important in your life, the folks that you're leaving behind, you become a stigmatized. You become a stigmatized. I know for a fact uh, becoming a stigmatized. It's the same way today as it was with Mary. When our lives do not go as we had planned, uh, it's easy to fear uh, the things which are unknown. Often, often, very often, God will allow things to happen in our lives, in your life, and in my life uh, that are hard to bear and hard to understand. Yet the Lord sends them our way so that we might grow in him and come to know him in a better way. Amen. When these times arise, it's easy to question the Lord's judgment. I can remember uh, taking uh, my father was a saxophone player, and he would blow the saxophone in the house. And I sit there and listen, and that music just filtered into me. And all y'all know that I'm just a novice, a a jack of all uh, uh, instruments, a master of none. I remember being down on South Street opening up my saxophone case and blowing my heart out out there. was invited to go inside. The, the Painted Bride was one of the places that was down there. And I was down there jamming with the fellas and uh, some name brand folk at the time, tell you the truth. And I'm jamming and blowing. This is what I want to be. But look out, God said, not so. I got another direction for you, Al. You ain't going to be blowing no horn. You ain't going to be staying up late at night. You ain't going to be out there in the streets. You ain't going to be sitting up there at the bar stool. You ain't going to be playing music to the devil. I'm going to snatch you up, and I'm going to put you where I want you to be. Oh, you know what? There is no disappointment at this time. I'm happy in the Lord. What's that song the kids used to sing? If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Say amen. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. You see, one inescapable part of being a Christian is the area of bearing your cross. Amen? And that's Matthew 16, 24. We bear a cross with this thing. No one said that this life was going to be easy, but the end results are worth the trials of life. I'm still talking about Mary. I'm still talking about Christmas. This young lady had to go through some changes. Wait a minute. To see The secret to surviving the dreadful times is to learn to trust completely in the Lord. Hey, I got another short story for you. A short story. 
uh, though a woman earned a small wage and was working very hard, she was a radiant and triumphant believer in Jesus Christ. One day, a wealthy lady had a very gloomy outlook on life and said to her, you're happy now, but what about later? Suppose your employer moves and you have no job. Suppose uh, life gets bad. Suppose your car breaks down. Suppose uh, your children don't do right. Suppose life gets all turned upside down. Well, the woman stopped her in her tracks and said, stop, stop right now, because I don't have to suppose. She said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I don't need supposes. Supposes don't work for me. Supposes are for the folks who are miserable. I don't suppose. I just have Jesus, and that's enough. Oh, my goodness. We've got to completely give up stuff that cause us to suppose this and suppose that and just let it flow in godliness. It just about sums up uh, the way we live. Is that right? Suppose you'd have got what you something else that you wanted for Christmas. Suppose, 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 suppose. Many of us live in the supposed and not in the providence. Oh my goodness! Hear me clearly. The number two, number C on this thing, the consecration of Mary's life, despite the shame that was sure to come her way. She, oh yeah, shame. Hear me clearly now. Shame that was sure to come my way, and, and you know how you know that because Joseph was about to put her away privately. Despite the humiliation uh, she would bear, Mary was willing to submit her life to the will of the Lord. Watch this. And by doing this, she gets an example of obedience. She sets and gets and becomes an example of obedience and surrender that every child of God needs to take to heart. You and I would do well to learn to submit to the will of the Lord in every detail of our life. You say, well, Rev, you mean while I'm drinking, you know, drinking, a, uh, drinking some water, drinking, uh, you know, Bottle of soda. Everything in your life uh, needs to be dedicated. You ain't got to sit there and say, oh, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I'm putting my shoes on, oh, Lord. No, in every detail of your life, spiritually, you just give it over to God. Amen. You thank God. You thank God that you can slip your shoes on. You thank God that you can. You can, you can, you can. And what you can't, you thank God because he's causing you to be an overcomer even in your can'ts. We need never fear uh, the providential hand of God. He will do us no wrong. Regardless of what may come our way, we can rest assured that God is going to use it uh, to get glory to himself and to help us learn to be more about him. You hear what I'm saying? Watch this. Let's go, uh, Joseph, who, who in the Bible? Think about Joseph, who was in the Bible. I'm not talking about Mary's uh, uh, husband, Joseph. I'm talking about Joseph way back. He was loved by his father and occupied a special place and privilege in his family. I'm talking about Joseph, the boy of many colors. Yet. God allowed Joseph to be sold by his brothers into slavery and to spend the next 13 years in either servitude or prison. However, in the end, 
God prove that his plan was the right plan, and Joseph came out on top of the heap because he gave himself over to God. You know what? Sometimes I think about it. Oh, I could have pressed and pursued and pressed and pursued and pressed and pursued uh, that little music thing because I wasn't about playing in nobody's church. I was blowing that horn out there because I just wanted to stand out there, make some sounds, make some music, see if I could make some money. I could have pressed to do that, pressed to do that, and no telling where I would have wound up. You know, do not fear God's providence. Do not fear God's providence. Number two, um, in Matthew 1, 18 through 25, do not fear God's plan, okay? Do not fear God's providence and do not fear God's plan. Immediate obedience is what God is looking for. In verses 18 through 19, the plan of Joseph's life, and I'm talking about Mary's Joseph. I'm talking about Mary's Joseph. Joseph, uh, like Mary, was on the way to having all that a Jewish man could have asked for in that day. He was about to be married to a pure, righteous Jewish girl. Everything was falling into place. Then came the news that shattered his life and brought all his dreams and hopes crashing down to the ground. Mary was pregnant, and Joseph was not the father. With his dream shattered, his hopes dashed, his pride lost, his life seemed over, to Joseph there appeared to be only two possible solutions. He could divorce Mary quietly and have her sent away until the baby was born. He could divorce her publicly and thereby subject her to the ridicule and humiliation of the public. Uh, this option could have also resulted in her death because in Deuteronomy chapter 24, it means when you're found as Mary was found, you're supposed to be stoned to death. Joseph was literally turned upside down down by the news of Mary's pregnancy. Oh, my goodness. I'm talking about real here. I'm not talking about some floaty, flighty stuff up in the air. I'm talking real stuff here. I'm talking about culture. I'm talking about society. This is what would have happened. We have all faced uh, situations in our lives, and you thought you had everything lined up and planned out pretty well, and then the Lord uh, went and did something that was against uh, the rules and messed everything up for you. Uh, so you thought, so I thought. However, this is what life is like under uh, the curse of sin. Now, now think about uh, Brother Job here for a minute. Oh, his life was all set up. He was doing good. He was in the right place doing the right thing for the right reason. The richest man in the land had a family, a wife, and all the uh, livestock. He had everything. And God said, well, this was the problem Job faced. He suffered the loss of everything he had, uh, everything he worked for, and everything he loved. His uh, was a life of trial uh, and trouble for some time. These times will come to all of us, but we've got to have faith and not fear. If you allow if you don't handle your fear, then your fear will handle you. Watch this. The privilege of Joseph's life. I'm, I'm running down here now. The privilege of Joseph's life. As Joseph pondered what to do about uh, his situation, God sent an angel to tell Joseph that he was about to gain far more than he stood to lose. Uh, Joseph finds out that he is the man who has been what? Chosen to raise the Messiah. Now, you tell me. He had been handpicked by God to provide Jesus with his physical and spiritual training. You hear what I'm saying? Joseph 
was handpicked by God to provide Jesus with his physical and spiritual training. His early days, he is the one who took him uh, to Jerusalem. He is the one uh, who had to go find him when he was in the temple uh, speaking with the, the elders and, and the, the, the spiritual director, the directors. He was there. Joseph is the one who pointed him in his natural self to his spiritual self. His is a privilege that is unique in all humanity. Sometimes the Lord's assignments are costly, but they always pay back far more than they require from us. In fact, just the privilege of being chosen by God to do anything is a privilege beyond description. Y'all hear what I'm talking about? You got to believe in God to believe what I'm saying. If you don't have a, a, a description and a projection and a perception of God, you're on your own, my brother and my sister. And I know y'all out there on Saturday morning at 9 o'clock at 10 minutes to 10, uh, I think you got a spiritual perception of who God is. You say, well, why are you, why are you, you going through all this with us, uh, uh, Pastor Jenkins? I'm going through it because what it does, it helps me to help you to help you help somebody else, that God can help me to help you, that you can help me to help somebody else. Oh, my goodness, this is a cycle that is never ending. God created, and we move forward to be about God's creation. He had been handpicked. Sometimes the Lord's assignments are costly, but they always pay back far more than they require from us. You hear what I'm saying? He was chosen. God chose, chooses the common people, the common man and the common woman to carry out the dictates and plans that he has, the priorities of Joseph. I'm going to Quicken it up here. Joseph willingly took the assignment offered to him by the angel. God sent an angel. In spite of the ridicule and the humiliation, he was willing to make the Lord's will a priority in his life. This is an example that we all need to emulate. It was never a question of if with Joseph. Joseph Freely gave it up. He was willing to obey the clear command God gave him without question. Now, I'm sure he wrestled a little bit because, come on now, he was engaged to a pregnant woman. woman pregnant wasn't his baby. Come on now, he wrestled. But an angel came to him and said, fear not, Joseph. Fear not, one, was Mary. Fear not, two, was Joseph. You hear what I'm saying? Fear not. Let's talk about the last uh, fear not here. Fear not God's providence. Fear not God's plan. And watch this. Do not fear God's presentation. Amen. Fear not. Fear not. Watch this. Who was the third? The shepherds in the field. These men. Now, this one is really important. Give me a minute here. These men were the social outcasts of the day. Y'all with me on that? They were usually vulgar, dirty, smelly, and unkept. <laughs> we're talking about shepherds in the field. Uh, you know, these, these weren't these tidy, uh, what we see at the manger, leaned over at the manger. No, these guys are out in the field. They were also religious outcasts. You say, what do you mean, Pastor Jenkins? By virtue of their jobs, they were defiled and considered unfit to participate in the ceremonies of the temple. They were separated from both God and man out in the field and out of the temple. If any man ever needed hope, these men did. Hope is what they got. You say, what do you mean temple? They, they was, the sheep, don't, you got to stay with the sheep on the Sabbath. You just can't go to church on Sunday and mess around and, and not deal with the sheep. You got to be with the sheep constantly, constantly. We are sheep. Jesus gave himself up for us. We are the sheep of his pasture. He pasture. He is with us constantly. 
constantly. He took the sin of the world upon himself, just like the shepherd takes uh, the, the cleansing of the sheep in the field upon themselves. But here God announces to the shepherds. Y'all stay with me. If any men needed hope, these men did. Hope is what they got. This is the natural state of man, separated from God by virtue of our sins and doomed to an eternity apart from God. Where's that? Romans 3.23 and Isaiah 59.2. And my point here in, in point number three, B, the blessedness in verses 9 through 14, the blessedness of these shepherds' lives. Watch this. These outcast keepers of sheep are the first to receive the news that the Lamb of God has come into the world. What a privilege has been afforded to these shepherds, these humble men out in a field. And what did the, she- what did the angel say? To them? Fear not, for a child is born. Fear not, Mary. Fear not, Joseph. Fear not, shepherds. Look at the character. Mary submissive. Joseph uh, allowed himself uh, to rear uh, the Son of God. And the shepherds who were in the fields, we are the sheep of the shepherds. Why were these shepherds afraid? They said, fear not. What a privilege. They were afraid. Sinners have always displayed fear uh, when they are confronted with the reality of God because coming face to face with the Almighty has a way of making one have uh, to face their own condition. You say, why do people act like they act and they don't want to come? Because they got to face their condition, sisters and brothers. You can go through your file right now. And don't want to face some of the stuff you did, some of the things you said, some of the people and places you've been. That's face to face, and you got and you come face to face with your sin. You don't want to have that stuff brought to God. If you know God, if you don't know God, you don't care because you're gonna to continue to do what you're doing and expect that you're gonna get a different result. And that's true. It's true. That's true fear. Sinners ought to fear the Lord. After all, it is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 9, 10. But we must remember that the Lord's uh, presentations are also his invitations for us to come unto him. When he shows himself to humanity, God is desiring that we respond in faith and come to him. Watch this. Uh, Take note of what I'm about to say right here, that the angels gave the shepherds directions as to how to find the babe Jesus. That was a blessing for these guys, these shepherds, these lowly men, uh, to be called to come before the king of glory. Yet that is the same privilege enjoyed by everyone today. All of us, everyone out here, Revelations twenty two seventeen, John three sixteen. you know, for God so loved the world. There is only one reason why we remain in the sin condition that we have. There's only one reason, because we don't want to fess up, face up, and look into the heart of God and let him look into our hearts and relieve us of a condition that's sending us to hell. Uh, Y'all heard me say some time ago, uh, I learned this way back in Bible school, uh, come confess, receive, and testify. I'll say this sometime right now. This is one of my first, uh, the scripture uh, reading, come, all that come to him, uh, all he... All he calls upon will come to him, and he will not cast out. Confess. Uh, confess with thy mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and thou shalt be saved. Receive to as many as received him. To them he gave the power to become the sons and daughters of God. And testify with the heart we believe unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. All right, I'm getting ready to shut it down right now. I'm getting ready to shut it down. Watch this, this last point of the brilliance of these shepherds' lives. 
after these shepherds met the, with Jesus, the baby, they were forever changed. They left that meeting with Jesus and Mary and Joseph, spreading the good news that the Messiah had come. Read the scripture. They didn't just leave and go back to the sheep. They left and went back to the sheep. But as they were going to the sheep, they became shepherds themselves to humanity. They gave the good news. God has come. All those who heard the shepherds, uh, they, they just they glorified and they marveled at the shepherd's story. Come on now, shepherds. When the shepherds heard the message of the angel, they reacted with fear. But that fear eventually led uh, to their salvation. So it is with us. Some may fear to hear uh, the message of the gospel and to come to the Lord for salvation. Uh, you may think that God will not forgive sins. God is always in the forgiving business. The truth is, if he is calling you, if he is calling someone you know, and you are calling them through the Christ that is in you, don't turn away from it. Be like our conversations. Tell somebody about it. Well, you got to lose. You don't have nothing to lose. You don't have nothing to lose. Oh, they're going to look at you different. They're looking at you different anyway. In John six thirty seven, then if you bring someone to Christ, here comes your crown. Here comes your star. He can take a life of wretchedness and turn it around for his glory if you will allow him the opportunity to do so. And in conclusion, three times the angels came, and three times there was a reaction based in fear. Well, when the fear had been dealt with and the Lord's message was allowed to come through, the message was seen for what it really was, a promise of grace. So it is in this Christmas season. Amen. So it is in this Christmas season. There may be those things around you that you fear. But if you can learn the lesson of Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds, what they learned, and what they learned was to trust the Lord, whatever the cost. Then you will find that he can turn all fears going into next year to peace for this season and every season thereafter. Hear this. Someone has cited these three keys to happiness, to joyfulness. Fret not. Fret not. He loves you. John 13, 1. Faint not. He holds you. Psalms 139, 10. And number three, fear not because he keeps you. Well, God bless you. God be with you as we move through this time of the year, into the next time of the year, and hereafter, year after, and hereafter. This is Pastor Jenkins signing off in Jesus' name. Thank you for indulging and sharing in this fresh manna Sabbath moment. Amen.
thank you for listening. Join us next time and remember to subscribe. Fresh Manna Ministries. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Number 6, verse 24 to 26. God bless you. Have a great day.